Hi everybody, welcome to Sonia IS and welcome back to the high yielding series on environment. Today we are going to cover a very important and often requested topic that is species. Okay, and I will be focusing on majorly the species which have been in news. Okay, now these species lectures will be very short and crisp. And what I've done, I've divided them into some parts. So in the first lecture today, I'll be telling you about invasive species which are in the news. We'll also discuss what are invasive species, followed by aquatic species which are generally in the news followed by mammals and generally birds and other miscellaneous like species right the basic idea is so that we'll see most of the species and i'll also tell you some related things about them so that this does not become that challenging a topic for you okay in invasive species we'll see today prosophis juliflora we'll see lantana camera charu muzzles forked fanwort sena spectabilis a lot of invasive species one in the news because in kaziranga national park so we'll see some important ones okay and when we'll also see the the let's say the deadly duo of this bullfrog and also there's a snake right and lastly we'll also see this red eared slider turtle okay and before i begin i will tell you about this thing this is known as invasive alien species or in some cases these are known as the exotic species okay or in some cases they will be the non native species okay now you can see from the name these are alien species okay so what generally what are the properties so number 1 they will be not native to to the region okay second they are very efficient okay and by efficient i mean if they are brought to another region let's say scientists bring a weed or a tree species from south america to india so here they will be very efficient they will use the resource very efficiently and that leads to competition okay and after some point of time the native species are not able to survive okay so and this has been seen also in case of lantana camara in case of prosopis juliflora so on and so forth that when you bring them after some point of time they will take a lot of water they will take a lot of resources and because of them the biodiversity nearby okay in that region is not able to flourish okay additionally i have told you there is a very famous living planet report by wwf in that report also it is said that one of the major cause of biodiversity loss is the attack of invasive species okay and also your ncert talks about a term known as evil quartet that four major regions for biodiversity loss again in that one of the reasons is invasive species okay so remember that these species are not native to that so whenever you see for example if they say two statements on prosopis juliflora or any of these species and one of the statements if they say that this species is endemic to this part of india that would be wrong we will see in many of the cases these species are from south america from other parts of africa etc so that is one of those examples right now before i move on to the examples in current affairs i'll also just quickly highlight few of the examples that you also read in static okay so for example you have heard maybe about parthenium okay so when we had got that imported wheat okay pl480 in that scheme so we had gotten this particular parthenium this is also an invasive species apart from that water hyacinth okay this also is an invasive species this is known as terror of bengal it guzzles or it takes in a lot of water so this is why this is also let's say one of the traditional invasive species okay apart from that you have russian poplar okay and this was a news why because the pollen grains of this became airborne and this led to a lot of respiratory issues okay so not only was it a invasive species but it also caused other health related issues right so parthenium water hyacinth and russian poplar now we'll see one by one the ones which have been in use number one prosopis juliflora okay and by the way a question has already been asked on prosopis juliflora once okay so i'll just show you what was the question asked why a plant called prosopis julia juliflora is often in the news okay now i have already told that these are invasive species so here they tend to reduce the biodiversity biodiversity in a region in which it goes okay but 
Why is it a news? It is a news because of two different areas. Number one, the De Delhi government plans to remove them and how they want to remove them by introducing the indigenous varieties. So number one, Delhi government is creating a proposal to remove them. Second, you have maybe heard about Banni grasslands, okay, in the region of Gujarat, Banni grasslands. So right now, more than 30% of Banni grasslands is infested by Prosopis juliflora. So there also, that has become a big problem. Again now, when I say Banni grasslands, what should come to your mind? Region, that is Gujarat. Of course, these are grasslands. So vegetation wise, you, you should know. And thirdly, which is the famous tribe which is found here? So the name of the tribe is Maldhari tribes. Okay. So two things, because of the Delhi government, they want to remove this. Okay. This is also known as this Vilaiti Kikar. And second is Banni grasslands also has a huge problem of uh, Prosopis juliflora. So that is one thing you need to know. Other than that, it is not just restricted to these two regions. It will also be found in, let's say, parts of central India, parts of south India. So overall, this has been a problem. Prosopis juliflora. Okay. Next is Charu muzzles. Okay. Now, what are muzzles? Muzzles are found under this phylum that is known as mollusks. That is number one thing you need to know. Second, this is affecting which area? So they are affecting the backwaters of Kerala. And if you want to be very specific, it is Ashtamudi Lake, okay, which is a Ramsar site in Kerala. Ashtamudi Lake, right, in Kerala, which is a Ramsar site, is getting infested. Now, first of all, I told you these are invasive species. So they actually are native to South and Central America. So from that coast, let's say the ship moved and the ship came to Indian waters. Now the ship has sometimes in the ballast water, which is of course the water which is ex like moved out, okay, which is thrown out from that, this came into contact with this Kerala, okay. And apart from that, it is also said that Cyclone Oki was also responsible for introduction of Charu Mosels, okay. So again, re recapping what we need to know, Charu Mosels, one, Kerala, not native to India, okay, and affecting which part? It is affecting Kerala's Ashtamudi Lake. Ashtamudi Lake is actually a Ramsar site. Okay. Then by the way, this image you might have come across in current affairs or in general, right? This actually blooming in Kodi Kode, okay, is where this about forked fanboard. So what is this? It's an aquatic plant, okay? And this pink phenomena actually happened. This again happened in Kerala, right? So forked fanboard basically in Kerala is this aquatic plant which is booming and giving this this yellow uh, sorry this pink color so you may be asked that why or like what is this so this is locally known as mullen pile okay that is one thing but apart from that just know that this is an aquatic plant and the blooming or massive blooming of this aquatic plant is leading to this invasive phenomena all right which is giving it this pink color and what is the region that is kerala again one more thing of kerala that we have seen okay third is Lantana camera as we move along. So what is this? This is actually an ornamental or a decorative shrub. Okay, you will see this in a lot of gardens and almost 40% of India in general has been infested with Lantana camera. So that's a big problem. Okay. And again, very thing, this is invasive. This is going to be very efficient. It will grow and multiply very rapidly. So all these things will be becoming a problem very adaptable species right so they can adapt to multiple ecosystems so that becomes a problem now for lantana camera you can additionally write down bandipur bandipur tiger reserve okay or the bandipur national park has a lot of forest fires which are attributed to lantana camera number one okay second in bandipur national park under manrega you have a specific provision recently to remove lantana camera okay so mg narega in that in bandipur you have a specific provision which is added how can you remove lantana camera so just remember it is an ornamental plant you will find this in a lot of gardens as well for the people who are actually into gardening etc right it is going to spread very fast right so this is why this is also usually in use lantana camera 
नेक्स्ट इज सेनास्पेक्टेबिलिस नाउ दिस इज वेयर वी कैन एक्सपेक्ट अ क्वेश्चन इन सेनास्पेक्टेबिलिस राइट बिकॉज दिस हैज बीन इन यूज इन टू वेरी प्रोमिनेंट एरियाज राइट वन ऑफ कोर्स is in mudu malai tiger reserve right so this is the number one and invasive species as you can see from the image right so this is in news in a specific mudu malai tiger reserve that's number one apart from that kerala again has come out with a plan to eradicate sena spectabilis okay so they are saying that you should remove that why because it is causing a lot of problems right however in this management plan they are saying attempt should not be to kill the tree okay but there has to be a definite restoration plan then only we'll try to remove it okay this is similar to delhi government's plan delhi government wants to remove prosopis juliflora that is different and we've seen kerala government wanting to remove sena spectabilis we've also seen in uh, the previous slide lantana camera being tried to be removed in parts that is in bandipur okay so now you tell me where exactly in india do you have bandipur national park right so this is senus spectabilis i've also mentioned lc whenever lc is mentioned in any slide it actually means this is least concern okay the iucn status of this is going to be least concern all right moving on now kaziranga national park you know this is in assam assam right now has seven national parks now what happened here in kaziranga national park okay so here new forms of invasive plant species have come in so that has that is a problem and a lot of invasive species have been mentioned you don't have to remember them all just have a look at the names i'll just read out the names for you okay so things like bombax siba okay creteva magna trevia nudiflora so the point is in case one or two of them are mentioned that these are in the news these are what you you can be asked an identification based question okay second kaziranga national park in general is in news so they can ask you one horned rhinosaurus okay or other things related to kaziranga that can separately be asked okay so again here in the same thing i've just mentioned a table for example this is ipomoea this is mimosa etc right so these are again some of these let's say the parthenium i already told you it has come in because of this imported uh, let's say the wheat okay lantana we've already discussed right bombax siba was this which is found in uh, kaziranga right apart from that you also have this cistrum diernum which also i told you so this is actually otherwise a source of vitamin d3 okay here just go through the names you don't have to remember these names of course okay but in general you have to just see for example last one is cane right it is an invasive plant again threatening kaziranga so these are the ones which are also threatening kaziranga and other than that you also have this whole list more around 18 invasive plants were identified so of course it is not practically possible to remember all the 18 but just know that kaziranga was in news because of these invasive varieties and of this if you want to just maybe focus on so just one can be bombex siba okay that is maybe something more important in all of this right and apart from this cane and cistrum diernum okay apart from that i think lantana i've already told you parthenium i've already told you right now this also was a news invasive frog and a snake so this deadly duo it was known as the deadly duo of american bullfrog and this brown tree snake right so what happened because of them they used to multiply and because of multiplying and because of them being non invasive species this was harming the biodiversity okay and also this was learning uh, like harming agriculture produce and secondly it was leading to power interruptions so now you can also see the kind of impacts not just on the biodiversity but also in the overall economics these invasive spe species can have okay one more thing if you have a let's say uh, who can be an in invasive species maybe one, you have a question can it be a fungus can it be some microorganism can it be some other animal plant etc so all of them can be an invasive species okay so invasive species does not always have to be only plant please remember this part as well so american bullfrog and red tree snake right and the last one there is red eared slider turtle okay now before i tell you just remember that in general you the 
indigenous varieties of turtles cannot be uh, like used as pets okay so what happens people sometimes they get access to the non native varieties and they use them as pets now what happens first of all these non native varieties are able to multiply reproduce very quickly and then what happens because of that after some point of time let's say they become big they have to be moved out and when they move out then it becomes a problem so one such problem also leads is this because of red eared slider turtle again see these are least concern okay these are usually found in urban wetlands like for example sukhna lake is in chandigarh okay guwahati bangalore sanjay gandhi national park etc right now what can this do first of all they are reproducing growing fast very fast this we already know right and this actually becomes a threat to the native turtle species because of its very fast abilities right this will lead to competition that will happen right apart from that it can lead to outcome competition and this can also transfer diseases and parasites to the native so that is why whole or because of all these regions this overall becomes a problem okay so let me just quickly recap what all species we have seen so far so we started the lecture just di discussing the basics of what are invasive species and we saw some varieties like parthenium water hyacinth russian poplar then we continued the discussion with prosopis juliflora right we saw charu mosels forked fanwort lantana camara sena spectabilis invasive species in kaziranga right then we saw american bullfrog and brown tree snake and last we saw red eared slider turtle okay so all you now need to do is to just mention invasive species and just the names okay because other information now because of repeated revisions and covering this again and again should now be very clear to you all right again those of you who want to avail all like cover environment in very good detail can see the prelims crash course you can avail all the lectures at one go you, you will also get the notes alongside that will be very useful for your preparation right fine i'll now meet you in the second part of this special lecture okay so please keep revising till then thank you